What do you mean by the term molecular beam epitaxy? Well, my name is Rishi Ramjul and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask ourselves that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term molecular beam epitaxy? Well, let's run out. So, before we go deeper into what you refer to as molecular beam epitaxy, first we have to see what you refer to as the term epitaxy. So, epitaxy is a process by which when we take a particular substrate like this, the growth of a thin crystalline film on top of a particular crystalline substrate is simply what you refer to as epitaxy. So here, the growth of a very thin crystalline film on top of a crystalline substrate is simply what you refer to as epitaxy. So, one such method by which we can now create a crystalline film on top of a particular crystalline substrate is molecular beam epitaxy. So how do we do this? What do you actually mean by the term molecular beam epitaxy? Well, let's find out. So, just like the name suggests, here we can understand or deduce the fact that molecular beams are used. Here, with the help of molecular beams, we are achieving the process of epitaxy. So for this, we have a particular apparatus. So now here, this is the apparatus that is used for molecular beam epitaxy. Because for us to achieve molecular beam epitaxy, a first agenda or a first requirement is to get molecular beams. So here, we get molecular beams with the help of certain cells referred to as effusion cells. Here, effusion cells provide us with molecular beam by converting a certain material into its vaporized form. And hence, it is also referred to as evaporating cells. Here, this is achieved by providing a certain kind of heating. So here, this is an effusion cell. This is an effusion cell. So here, we have multiple effusion cells like this. And now, over here, here we place the crystalline substrate on top of which we need a particular thin film to be formed. So here, the first thing that we have to do is that this particular apparatus must be created into a very high vacuum state. So for that, we have a turbo pump over here. So now here, when this particular turbo pump, when it starts rotating, here a vacuum is created inside this particular apparatus. So here, we need this particular apparatus to be in a very high vacuum state in order to prevent impurities from creeping inside this particular apparatus and also to prevent the molecules present inside this particular apparatus to collide with each other. So now, now we have made this into a very high vacuum state. Now, next is the process by which we now perform molecular beam epitaxy. So here, from this particular effusion cell, what we observe is that molecular beams are rejected or molecular beams are effused out of this particular effusion cell. And now, it is now projected onto this particular target, that is, this particular substrate. And what we observe is that a particular thin film is formed on top of this particular crystalline substrate like this. So, these particular molecular beams, they either fall directly on top of this particular substrate or after striking it, it bounces somewhere here and there and then finally it later sticks on to this particular surface. So now here, if we need multiple layers, then after these particular molecules are fused over here, then we effuse these molecules like this. And now another layer can be formed on top of this like this. So using this method, very thin films can be achieved because the molecules come out of the evaporator or the effusion cell in a beam. And also the rate at which the molecules come out of this particular effusion cell can also be controlled just by controlling the temperature of this particular effusion cell. So therefore, this is a simple direct deposition process. That is, these molecules are directly deposited on top of this particular crystalline substrate. This thus is the basic idea behind what you refer to as molecular beam epitaxy. As simple as that, guys. There's nothing more to it. So, I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as molecular beam epitaxy. And if you guys found this video informative, please hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So, stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.